speaking in the past episodes and um, I really, we got a great male perspective of the dance industry. I kind of want to know from you what your experience has been in the industry as a female and then if you want to consider them separate things as a black female in the industry. Oh. <laughs> um, it's hard for a woman in the industry. There's 10 million of us, number mm -hmm. one. And as a black woman, I think it's twice as hard because there's specific things that are acceptable at specific times of the year for us. Mm -hmm. as, as, and I, I say that meaning at one point, being a black woman and having an afro was not okay. Mm -hmm. Having big natural curly hair was not something that was acceptable. Mm -hmm. And then one day... Someone gets on Instagram and they show these luscious curls and now everyone wants these curls. Mm -hmm. Now that it's acceptable, oh, we want the black girl with the curls. Mm -hmm. We want her to look really black. Now, people want a more racially ambiguous look. So now you're getting the lighter skin with the curls. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at auditions today, there was a time where I was auditioning and my big curly hair was the only big curly head in the room. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody got a big curly head in the room. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's really hard as a black woman to be accepted. You can't do too much because you're being too aggressive. Mm -hmm. You can't do too little because you'll get overlooked. How come you're not how come you're not loud enough with yourself? How come you're not being strong? Mm -hmm. But if you're too strong, then you're too much. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, also the the type of movement that's accepted for us. I personally as a as a woman who dances in heels, I find it annoying that and this is absolutely no shade, but women of lighter skin tones and different and straighter hair and um, more racially ambiguous looks mm -hmm. can be on Instagram and shaking their asses and humping the floor and no one will look twice. People will say, damn, that's fly. Oh, she's getting it. Let a black girl with an afro do that. And they're like, eh, oh, she's supposed to do that. She's black. Mm, it's you know expected. what I mean? It's expected. Or she's doing too much. Why is that black girl shaking her ass like that? Making us look bad. Yeah. Mm. And it's... It's annoying and it, it boils me, it boils my skin because as a woman who's more so artistic, mm -hmm. yeah, I could shake my ass. But then when I give a line, then it's like, eh. <laughs> so what is it that you want me to do? I feel right, like as a right. black woman in the industry, it's really hard to make the industry happy. happy. One thing I've noticed, like in, when I was dancing, like whether it be a commercial project or a dance project, I always noticed that I was always added to a cast to be that one piece of diversity. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like that's a big issue that people don't even realize is that, like, there can only be one black guy or yep. one minority, let's just say, whether it be Asian, uh, Latino, black, whatever. There's always, like, we're sprinkled in there to kind of diversify the cast. Yep. And why is it that, and it's like, I'm not a person that's big on black and white. Like, mm -hmm. I take life for what it is and I do what I gotta do. But I do always wonder sometimes, it's like, why is it that it's fine to have an all white or people that look white cast? But for some reason, it's always like when you add minorities in there, it has to be this one spot for a black girl. Yeah. This one spot for a black guy. Well, why do you think that is? Because the industry has to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And too many black people is threatening. It's mm. threatening. Think about it. You have a black movie out right now, Black Panther. You have this huge movement that's happening, and what happens? How come they don't have this in there then? It's like you can never make people happy mm -hmm. enough. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Think about formation when we did Super Bowl. Yeah. You have 30 women walk out on that field in afros, and they call it a threatening movement. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. Women who they don't look twice at. Right. Women who they don't get threatened by at all. Mm -hmm. Women who they don't respect. And now you're scared because there's 30 of us on the stage behind right. the most powerful woman in the industry right now. Right. You see and what that, I'm saying? And that threw me for a loop because a lot of the, like, the press that I would see about it was like, Beyonce did this like pro-black, like anti-white music mm -hmm. video. And it's, it kills me because it's just like people don't know what they don't know. And there's such a lack of like educating yourself before you speak right. and it's like that song wasn't even about 
anti-white anything. The video had some, you know, it, it had some images that were mm -hmm. uh, addressing things that we were seeing, like the little boy with his hands up and the police. Yeah. But they were, sorry, they were calling it an anti-police mm -hmm. uh, thing. The song, but the song literally had nothing to do with that. So it just always killed me when people just kind of have their opinion, an uneducated opinion. Well, the way the something. world is today, that if it's not for, it's against. That's true. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. But I'm digressing. As a black <laughs> woman in the industry, right. <laughs> you have to be better than all the time. And I tell this to my classes. I, I, I realize that a lot of my fans are black women mm -hmm. that see me as a woman and strong and stands in herself. And, you know, this industry is tough. It's tough as fuck. And people want to break you down every day because they just want to know how tough you really are. Yeah. They want to know how much you can actually handle. Oh, is she going to break today? Nope. I don't have time to break. So let's talk about Kara the Artist. So not too long ago, you launched Simply Stiletto. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of just want to know more about like what, as an artist, like what are your plans as an artist and also like what are the things that you hope to change or inspire within the industry through the through that movement um for so simply stiletto is basically i've realized that with heels it's become so much mm -hmm. and people are dancing and they're just screaming with their bodies the, the whole time and they have no idea exactly who they are and what they're aligned with and what met what the core of the reason why they're doing this is. Right. So simply stiletto for sure for me is about figuring out who you are in the most simplest form so that you can apply it to yourself as an artist. Uh, okay. So you can apply it to everything that you do. Um, simply why you're here. I never allow my classes to film mm -hmm. because I feel like it it penetrates into what it is people are trying to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like class is a place where you're supposed to go down. Class is a place where you're supposed to not be great. Right. You're supposed to figure it out. And when you do become great, you celebrate that. When you do go down, we celebrate that. It's right. never a, a bad feeling. Right. Um, as far as for myself as an artist, I want Simply Stiletto to be international. Um, we're working domestically now, mm -hmm. but I want to branch it out to the entire world because I really feel like it's important as a dancer to know who you are first. How is anybody that's offering a job supposed to trust you to be whatever it is they need you to be if mm -hmm. you don't know who you are? Right. Simply Stiletto is simply you. Simply who you are. Who am I and why am I here and why do I love this? And then identifying that and guarding it with barbed wire and, and alarm systems and making sure that nothing comes in and penetrates that reason. Yeah. Basically. No, I love I love the whole message of that because I think that even myself, you know, when I was dancing more, there was a moment where I started f to forget why I was doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's important to have a teacher to remind you that like, no, forget the cameras, forget all the, the industry stuff, forget all the bullshit. Yeah. Why did you do this? And remembering that. And I remember when I did my initial interview when I first launched Creators Club back in June of last year, um, I, I told uh, the person that was, that was interviewing me, I was like, the reason why I do this and even now even why I have this is because I always think about the day when I was that eight-year-old kid that was watching TV and like wanted to do that, mm -hmm. wanted to be that, da, 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 but I knew it was possible. Yeah. And it's like when you're young and you're in it like that and before the world starts to interject and tear you down and change your beliefs, you believe it. Right. And it's like, I always try to take myself back to that place and be like, no, when you were eight years old and wanted to do this, you believed it. Yep. You didn't know it wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. So I, it's like keeping that mentality. Yep. You know what I mean? That's what kind of keeps me moving. I want people to know that when you look at me, you can be yourself. Yeah. You can be proud of yourself. You can be black as you want to be. And, and you can be comfortable in all that it is that you do. And people will love you regardless. And if they don't love you, they're not for you. And that's okay. That's why I do it. Because yeah. people need hope. I, I love that. Yeah. So you know what? That's what I'm, I'm going to toast to that. <laughs> so my toast is going to be um, living your life unapologetically. And um, always, always, always staying true to yourself. And like when everybody else is turning right and you feel the, 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 the need to turn left, turn left. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm going to cheers to that. Yeah. You get your own personal cheers first, though. Oh. <laughs> I want to cheers to the love. Mm -hmm. People 
originally do the things that they love to do because they love it. Absolutely. So, cheers to the love. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you have it. That concludes another episode of the Creators Club. Kara, thank you so Thanks, much. David. Real quick, tell the people how they can find you online. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at, at Kira M. Harper. K-I-I-R-A-M-H-A-R-P-E-R. And you can send me an email at simplystilittleheels at gmail.com. So all that info will be in the bio how you can reach Kira. But also, I'll probably put some dates if you're traveling. Are you traveling soon? Um, as of right now, we are on hold for a little bit, but okay. summertime, we will be back. All right, so I'll put those when they, if, they, if they exist at the time. Um, thank you. Thanks, David. And see you guys next time.